there's still an indictment to be made here, and that is to understand the difference between force and bullying. Mm -hmm. So this today, what Dick Durbin is doing, is an example of bullying, of chilling the concept of free speech, but not using government as a forceful mechanism to shut it down. They're not saying to them, to, to Alec, as you said, uh, you must provide us your donor base. They're not saying to corporations, you they're must give us your names. Sure. They're not, there's no subpoenas, as you said. But if, what it is, it's got the whiff of bulliness. It's got the whiff of a congressional subcommittee. It's got the whiff of a United States senator saying, anonymity in speech is not valuable, and therein lies the indictment. Speech, and specifically anonymous speech, is at the core of American democracy from Publius on forward. And the left seems to have forgotten that anonymity is a virtue, not a vice, and anonymity is what they are attacking. Well, this was something that had come up um, a couple years ago during Prop 8. When Prop 8 passed, um, the left had agitated for donor lists. Who, who, who had funded that? Because um, they, were, they were not thrilled with the outcome. Um, and I think what they forget is where, why are all these things secret in the first place? Look back to the civil rights era. Look mm -hmm. back to shaking down the NAACP for their membership list. Wow, that's a really nice house you have. It would be a shame if something happened to it. And so the fact that the pendulum you know, that they think it's not going to swing back the other way is so weird to You're me. You're right. Campaign finance but today has taken the form of suggesting anyone who's an anonymous donor is a big, bad, you know, guy behind the scenes, seeding politics with their, their money to, to force it in their directions. Who knows what kind of ill motives they could have uh, when, in, in fact, anonymity has benefited people like the NAACP. And a lot, of the, a lot of the groups that love to unearth the anonymity, by the way, are getting money from George Soros. That's actually <laughs> true. Some of the ones that are, are the best at finding these anonymous donor lists get huge money from a far yeah. left. Uh, progressive Good for one side, but not for the other, right? Right, uh, absolutely. No, I think, and I think it's the campaign finance laws themselves that have created some of this. Uh, Bradley Smith, the former chairman of the FEC, wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal just a couple days ago. We'll put, we'll put up a piece of it. Uh, he said, thanks to campaign finance reform, citizens groups must navigate a maze of government paperwork and apply to the IRS for, IRS for a tax license to speak on politics. People literally need a lawyer to figure it out. In some ways, a well-connected, D.C.-based specific political lawyer, and I can say as someone who's run C4s, C3s, and PACs, uh, there's no way to understand that maze at all. And so the left is able to effectively use to navigate that as a bludgeon to the, support the speech. Th that I think goes back to out. this as sort of a one-two punch. And Will, your point about the separation, these yes. abs it's absolutely correct. On the one hand, they will use the coercive power of government through the IRS, through the tax code, through and the FEC, was... through all of these groups. On the other hand, they'll have people who will stand up and mm -hmm. will just use sort of the mob mentality. I will say that, you know, you look at recent examples, not just of this sort of more clearly political stuff, but you look, well, it's all political stuff, I should say, Proposition 8 in California, this sort of shaming of people that supported that. You look at gun ownership in New York State. Remember that? We looked at these lists. There is this idea that people should have no privacy in their politics and they should always be subject to the whims of the mob. I think that's very scary.